This podcast represents my opinion and the opinion of my guests. This is not medical advice, and I am not establishing a patient-physician relationship with any listener. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for informational purposes only. And because each patient is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions you may have. It's 2023, and Dr. Tadros and I are back with Seth for another season of the Not Your Doc podcast. Hey, Dr. Tadros. Hey, how do you do it? I'm good. I'm doing good. I'm excited for the new year. We've got yeah. a lot of uh, good stuff coming forward, I think. Amen. Yeah. So um, I'm Vanessa. We're back with you for another season. We're really looking forward to it. Um, we thank everyone who gave us a listen or a follow on uh, social media last year, and we really appreciate your feedback and support. Um, I think that some of the topics that we talked about really resonated with people, especially some of the personal stories that were shared. I really want to thank Seth for doing that with us, too. Mm-hmm. Um So we are looking forward to many more discussions this year about the issues that impact our health and well-being. So um, a little preview for you on what's to come this season. So um, in the first season, we had an introductory episode on anxiety. And so we're going to be diving more into some of those other anxiety disorders that we didn't hit on, OCD, PTSD. We'll also talk about addictions this year. Um, Dr. Tadros will bring us more important information about women's heart health, um, as well as non-medication, non-medication treatments for depression and anxiety. Of course, we'll talk about therapy more. Um, and we'll hit some important seasonal issues uh, and topics, uh, You know, for example, starting new habits in the new year, as well as awareness and prevention of drowning as water season comes on us. Mm-hmm. So um, this is, of course, just an overview and subject to change because we are um, changing our minds all the time about what to talk about on this show, aren't we, Dr. Tadros? We like to add. <laughs> yeah, we do. We, we don't subtract. We here. don't we subtract. Just, always we, add. We, yeah, I agree. Add. We're looking for more, <laughs> more topics. Right. Um, but, you know, we, we promise a bunch more content inspired, um, you know, from the depths of Dr. Tadros's brain and his 30 years of experience as a physician. So, um I think you probably feel the same way that like the more of these talks that we have, the the more we want to talk and keep doing more. Each yeah. each episode breeds like six offshoot episodes that we want to do as well. Yeah, no, I I was I was listening to what we're going to talk about. I'd like to have a talk about eating disorders. I yeah. think it's uh, we're seeing a little bit more of it in, in adults, uh, but uh, it's oftentimes it starts in, in their youth, and uh, I think that's I think that's important. I think we should include some people. Here, uh, I think it'll be fun to include some people here that that also have experience. Yeah, absolutely. Besides, some besides experts just, this year, yeah. Right, besides uh, just right. our 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 <laughs> our view, <laughs> just our own speaking <clears throat> into the void. No, I I agree completely. Yeah, so um, we we've got a lot to look forward to this year. Um, Seth is working on a sparkly new website for us, so we're gonna be we're gonna have a, a great like one one-stop shop for Mm -hmm. um you know you to come and listen to the podcast as well as view dr tadros's blog so it'll be all streamlined and in one one place so we we want interaction we want feedback yeah we do we definitely want interaction and feedback we uh we need we we're always looking to improve we're always looking to see what uh, makes a difference for people and and today we're going to be talking about Take it away. Okay. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about, I mean, it's the first week of the new year. I felt like we would be remiss if we didn't start with habits. Sure. Because I think everybody, well, many, many people this week are starting off the week with a resolution to start a new healthy habit, right? The, That's whether right. it's um, to get moving more often, to incorporate more healthy habits into their diet, or to drink less alcohol. Um, and I... For me, I know there's just so much information out there about what to do uh, in these new habits to eat healthier or exercise more or whatever that can be entirely overwhelming. Um, If you've opened up your social media feed in the last week, I'm sure you've been inundated with advertisements for, 
you know, home meal plans or exercise equipments and videos from influencers telling you, you know, if you just follow this plan and these six easy exercises, you'll have rock hard abs by February, like whatever it is. Um, And I know personally that when I'm exposed to that, like fire hose of suggestions in my face, my my first response is to be like, this makes me uncomfortable. And I throw up my hands. I say, well, no change for me today. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing anything differently. That's that's all it took. That's right. It's just, it's even, just too much. <laughs> it's even just thinking about or talking about is overwhelming, yeah. let alone doing it. Exactly. So um, what I thought we'd start off with um, that hopefully will set this podcast apart from the rest of that noise is a short discussion about habits and how we start or stop them. Um, mm-hmm. So... It, because it just it seems to me to be pointless to go you know on and on about how to eat differently or cook differently or exercise differently or anything like that without spending any time on how to try to to get ourselves to to do anything differently mm-hmm. right yeah. um so that that's sort of where I want to start beautiful so I have I have this you know theory about one of the big reasons why. Um, you know, when we are, are like our the hair on the back of our neck kind of rises when we think about, oh, I have a bad habit or oh, I, I need to start a new habit. Everything has to change this year. And I think one of them is that um, we assign habits a label of being good or bad. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make the argument here that habits themselves cannot be good or bad. They are morally neutral. And I'm I'm saying that because they are simply re- repeated behaviors, and not only are they repeated behaviors, but humans are are hardwired to create habits. Um, it, it's literally what has helped us to survive for the hundreds of thousands of years that we've been evolving into our current form. Um, we uh, and you know the fact that we are a habit forming species has led to our long term survival and organization into modern societies. I mean. Habits get us up out of bed in the morning. They help us to shower and get dressed regularly. They Mm -hmm. get us up to go to school or to work on a consistent basis. And so habits are not the boogeyman. The the word habit is not a bad word. Um, Habits are healthy and they're a positive part of the human experience. Well, they're they're healthy and uh, wonderful if you think of them. If somebody tells you that you need to change your habits <laughs> and tell somebody threatens you with your, your numbers or your cholesterol numbers, and that, sure. that's that's not that's not fun. But but I think you're right. I think people want if they if it's from within, not because they've been coerced, that they want to change because they think that there's something better for them, sure, for their life. And I think that's where it should everything like anything any change starts is from from your being interested um, to to make a difference in your own life. Correct, and I think that. Um, that a better way to phrase it that it, uh, versus a good mm-hmm. habit or a bad habit is a habit of good behavior or healthy behavior mm-hmm. or changing a habit of bad behavior, mm-hmm. or unhealthy behavior. It's the behavior itself that produces the outcome, right? Like, and the habitual repeating of the behavior that yeah. produces the outcome. So systematic is something is a system that you kind of plug in uh, that that kind of plug in the beginning and then you shoot out the the answer at the end and, uh, yeah. and it becomes kind of an easy path. Absolutely. And if we just if we if we try to like negate habit altogether, then we'll we'll never repeat any behaviors even if they're good ones. So I'm trying to say that the, that habit itself is a is a healthy thing and we need to like harness our natural, you know, strengths and desires as, you know, habit forming species basically to do the good ha- the good behaviors that we want to do. So mm-hmm. um I think that uh starting a new habit of a healthy behavior requires two really important things. And one is courage. And when I say courage, I mean the confidence to risk failing, messing mm-hmm. up or finding out that the behavior doesn't work for us. And discipline, meaning the physical act of repeating the behavior in the same way over and over. And so I think the critical piece of this is right-sizing or you know set, setting up well the new behavior that it is that you want to repeat. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 
I've seen plenty of people decide to make a whole a wholesale change altogether, and it doesn't last very long. Too much. What do you think? Yeah. What What do you think that stems from? Why is it that we we think that way when we know we can't execute it that way? I want I I want everything done. All the pain. Yeah. Over immediately. (laughs) I don't I don't like to stretch pain out over long periods of time. Mm -hmm. I want to see results as soon as possible. So the equivalent of um, why I may have habits that are not healthy or not uh, not 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 as good for me financially, et cetera, mm-hmm. is because um, something near term rewards me. Yes. Um, and so I'm getting that reward, whether it's even if it's trivial or if it's not that much, at least it's something that's small that mm-hmm. I get now, as opposed to taking a risk of trying something where it may not work, or if it does work, it takes too long. And if it does take too long, then I don't get all the rewards up front or enough of them up front to, for me to continue. And of course, that grit, that stick to and that's the tension between uh, trying something and mm-hmm. failing and then moving on to, mm-hmm. to an improved way of doing things, systematic way, a new habit, versus doubling down and trying it harder. And that's, uh, that's I'm always stuck about that, you know, uh, whether it's cooking food or whatever else like that. If it's, it's too difficult, it's too messy, it's right. too expensive, should I try to improve or should I just kind of give up and go back to eating out? So yeah. that's, yeah, so that'd be good. These are good discussions. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, you, t- you totally hit the nail on the head there. Like we've got to set ourselves up to take, to be able to take advantage of our, you know, our hardwired, our innate ability to d- repeat some of these things. And one of the ways to set yourself up to, for failure is to make a new behavior too complicated right. to repeat, yeah. right? Or if you're trying to teach a team a new habit or new technique yeah. or new systems, if you make it too nuanced, it is is very difficult for people to do it repeatedly and, and get a sense of success right away. So you have to simplify it. You sure. are correct. For sure. Yeah. Um, a couple I a couple of examples that I, I thought about with this is the difference between it, or I I know like you know I'll start off the new year and think to myself okay I'm gonna go to the gym every single day and mm-hmm. I'm gonna do a new workout program. Mm-hmm. Well, that requires me to do a lot of things that I haven't been doing at all. It requires me right. to put on my workout clothes every single day. It if requires me to them. drive to the gym every single day. Mm-hmm. It requires me to go in and be uncomfortable in a space that I'm not normally in every single day. That's right. Then I have to do the new exercises and make sure that I know what the new learn the new exercises do mm-hmm. the new exercises. And then deal with the soreness that comes after That's such right. a, a You're change. Not rewarded. Not rewarded. And then try to repeat that every single day. Right. And I, so I'm, I'm totally, I'm setting myself up for failure on no, all every, of those every, different every, fronts. Every single front. <laughs> on every and there, single when front. you don't improve in a week or a month yeah. or not as much as you picture, then yeah. you're really disappointed yes. for wasting all that time. You're discouraged. You feel like a failure. There's no positive reinforcement to keep you pursuing right. something like that. Right. So an alternative to making your goal, your new healthy behavior, something that's all encompassing, that requires a lot of steps and a lot of changes, is to make it very small and very simple. Right. So walk 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. I walk every day. I typically wear shoes every day. It's typically easy for me to find some situation in which I can walk a little bit longer than I normally, than than I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I can walk around a parking lot two times if I need to. That's right. That is my the proximity (laughs) is right there. It's easy for me. It's accessible. And it's something that I know that I can achieve regularly. It's, pr- it's practically on your way to doing other things. So right. you don't have to take deviate and change clothes and, mm-hmm. do, and, and, and park and then walk all the way to a gym. That's right. Absolutely. You make it simple as simple as possible, right? And the, the cost of not doing it is low, is right. relatively low, right? Right. It doesn't cost me any money on a gym membership that I'm not going to be using right. or new clothes or shoes that I'm not going to be utilizing. Right. Um, and, and even psychologically, well, it was 10 minutes of walking that I didn't do today. Tomorrow I'm going to do 10 minutes of walking. Mm-hmm. And it's not like tomorrow, if I return to my 10 minutes of walking, I won't remember how to walk, you know, right. I'll, I'll still be able to walk for the 10 minutes and I can just resume my habit then. The so other, we want to keep the stakes low. And the other piece of it, and we talk about this is perfectionism. The mm. sense that, that it has to be right and right away right. and big and expensive and fancy and uh, all that stuff. So the idea that it has to be done perfectly and as max out as possible yep. is, is is the antithesis of what we're talking about Absolutely. here. And uh, once again, the more complex you make the behavior that you're trying right. to reproduce, the less likely you are to be satisfied right. with how well you're doing That's it, right? right? 
So um, I'm I'm I should have said this a little bit earlier, but I'm borrowing some of these ideas from a book about habits called Atomic Habits mm-hmm. that came out a couple of years ago by someone named James Clear. Um, and this was like, you know, Brene Brown had him on her podcast and it was very, you know, yeah. popular in the corporate world and stuff like that. Um, he has a couple of really good ideas in there that I that have resonated with me and have mm-hmm. sort of like made me think about habits and behaviors this way. And one of them is about identity driven behaviors. Mm. Um, so this idea is basically and and the idea is essentially that our habits can boil down to two things that we talk a lot about in, in mental health as mm-hmm. well. Um, one is identity mm-hmm. and the other one is behaviors. All so right. identity meaning how you see yourself, mm-hmm. what kind of person you think you are or what kind of person you want to be. And then behaviors, meaning what do I do that demonstrates my sense of identity? Right. So one example that I have here is, um, uh, you know, my, thinking of my own identity and the import. I, so I'll, I'll say this. I am statement. So I am a healthy person. Mm-hmm. It's important for me when I make this statement about my identity that I use the present tense to assume that it's already part of my identity, mm-hmm. not I wish I could be a healthy person mm-hmm. or I'm not a healthy person, but I could be. Mm-hmm. This is a statement of, of being about myself. I am a healthy person. It's already it's already happened. Right, exactly. It's you're already, already happened. You're already the foregone conclusion, it. right? I'm already in it. So then that that's my identity. That's how I see myself. So then in my behaviors, I can think to myself, what behaviors would a healthy Vanessa engage in that I'd like to add more mm-hmm. to my life? Or what behaviors should I try to avoid or minimize that don't align with my identity as a healthy person? Okay. Um, and in this book, you know, I mean, you can you can take this to all different kinds of places. I am a productive person. I am a, a, a specific person. I am an efficient person. I am mm-hmm. a world-class weightlifter or I am a fast runner. Um, that's, you know, if you adopt these things into your identity first, it can be a a better and more longer lasting motivation for the behavior change. So I, I like this concept because I think it works by removing comparison and shame from, from the equation, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm saying I am a healthy person, not I am healthy. Like these influencers are, and I'm like all of these other people. So it's you, internal. So, I mean, we're, we're doing these positive aphorisms. This is not yeah. a 1970s right, uh, sure, thing. Right, sure, sure, sure. But, but people recognize that they want to be healthy. I yeah, mean, they yeah. know, they, but but what we're trying to do is to talk to your brain, just like right. of a hypnotist would do the yeah. same thing. These positive, uh, these you're or existing in the positive nature of, of what you're trying to do. We recognize that's not where you are now, but we're sure. talking we're talking to your brain so that the brain takes it kind of sops us up and starts working as if you already have it and as as if you already have to have these steps, these system uh, uh, systemic uh, systemized steps uh, in uh, in order to get you there. Absolutely, gotcha. I think um, you know obviously another huge piece of this is is shame is a tremendous motivator to not change, right? There you go. That if you, um, if you feel like you have a, a goal or something that you need to achieve, but you feel so far from it, mm-hmm. or that you've tried and failed before, mm-hmm. it will be so much diffi- more difficult to get back on the horse tomorrow, right? Yep. So I, I like this, this concept and the format of it coming out of, you know, this is motivation based on who I already am. Mm-hmm. I don't have to compare myself to anybody else. And I don't have to, I'm, just because I didn't, I didn't walk today, as mm-hmm. was you know the healthy behavior I'm trying to adopt for myself that aligns with my identity. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to feel shame about it because I still am a healthy person. My next choice will be in line with that ide- that and sense I, of identity. I, I think that, and you talk about shame. I talk about perfectionism. The concept of that that you're not where you already want. To, you, mm-hmm. you dreamt about being for weeks and months, and that you're not even close to that yet. Right. But the idea is, and this is something that adults, because we're as kids, we're graded by other people. Mm-hmm. But now we grade ourselves. And if I got up this morning and walked ten minutes, I got an A plus this morning. Yeah. You're just like, but that's not an A plus in the real world. But for me, yeah. because I haven't done it for decades, but now I've set uh, my goal as an A plus is a walk in the morning for ten minutes mm-hmm. for one day, 
that's an A plus. Absolutely. And it, and it doesn't matter because I'm not comparing myself to others mm -hmm. uh, that other people don't think it's an A plus yet. Right. Exactly. And every day that you do choose to do your 10 minutes of walking is the is the day mm -hmm. that the statement about yourself that I am a person who walks mm -hmm. 10 minutes every day is true. Right. You're reinforcing it. You're yeah. adding it. You're building it. Exactly. From the ground up. Which is, I, I think there, um, I think this is another really critical component too, because, um, you know, low self-worth is so That's intrinsically right. tied with, mm -hmm. um, you know, low mood and kind of learned right. helplessness and feeling like you can't really do very much. That's right. So mm -hmm. if you're, you can expand your, your concept of your self-worth by expanding the things that define your identity. Mm -hmm. By adding some of these small things in, so I, I like that it's they're toddler steps, they're baby them. steps. You're not, you don't have to advertise it to everybody, right? Exactly. And uh, and this is for you. You're you're learning how to grade yourself and how your self esteem, and you're choosing in the healthy way. Self esteem comes from within, not from external uh, reinforcers, but from within. Right. And that you recognize that it's not been what you wanted to do. That's why you want to change. Uh -huh. And uh, and then you set reasonable goals, simple mm -hmm. goals. And you're going to talk more about yep. this that are that are achievable, and you can give yourself an A. Yeah. I, I understand you're not an Olympic athlete, but you but you hadn't walked for ten minutes sure. for the last several years. Yes. So now you are. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So I I think that's a, a great way to start. Um, another idea that comes up uh, in this book, Atomic Habits, is kind of like the the four laws ah. of building good habits. He calls them good habits, so I'm going to call them habits of new behavior because I like it better. Good. Um, because habits are morally neutral. Um, <laughs> Just like feelings. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so the first is to make it obvious. Make the new behavior behavior obvious. The second is to make it attractive. Mm -hmm. The third is to make it easy. And the fourth is to make it satisfying. Okay. So um, I'm going to apply this model to a new healthier eating choice for us. So... My, my healthy eating choice is going to be to eat four salads per week. Okay. I'm going to have four salads a week. And I'm going to make that new habit obvious by keeping my salad making stuff at eye level in my refrigerator. Okay. All right. I'm going to make it obvious. Every time I open my refrigerator, I'm going to see the salad stuff right there. And it's going to be beautiful and right in front of me. It takes a little bit of effort to make sure it's there and fresh, but uh, but that's something exactly that's right. Right. Uh -huh. Um, we'll talk, we'll t that brings up the easy part in just a minute. We'll get sure. to that, Dr. Tadros. So we can make it attractive by including ingredients in the salad that we already like. You okay. can't go from like eating fast food, you know, every, every week for lunch and then making yourself a salad with iceberg lettuce and shredded carrots and uh -huh. fat free Italian dressing. Like no, that's completely unattractive too, and totally too, unsatisfying, too right? Too big of a leap and it's not fun, right? Exactly. So include some ingredients in the salad that you like already do you like chicken do you like a little bit of cheese do you like nuts do you like do you have a favorite vegetable or fruit mm -hmm. that you like to put in there put make it attractive to yourself um and then we can make it easy by doing a couple of things say i want to make this my lunch when mm -hmm. i go to work i can prepare the salad the night before so that it's easy as soon as i get up in the morning i grab it out of the fridge put it in my lunch box and go mm -hmm. or i can even buy pre-made salads at the grocery store that have okay. everything portioned out for me already with the dressing on the side boom easy peasy um and then finally we can make it satisfying literally satisfying by making the salad big enough and full of enough like satiating foods that right. it actually satisfies like a meal. So having enough protein in there, having some fiber in there, having mm -hmm. some healthy fats in there. Right. Um, and then another way to make it satisfying too is it, we could reward ourselves for having our four salads at you know Monday through Thursday for lunch by having a sandwich on Friday. Like yep. that's a that's a positive you know reward. And this all goes back to that like dopamine feedback loop that you were talking about mm -hmm. before that if you don't have the instant gratification and the mm -hmm. continuous reinforcement of what you're doing it's going to be really hard to keep repeating. So these yeah. are the four steps that he's he's advocating for to help us implement some of these new behaviors. So and tell me your tr thoughts. Tradition yeah, traditionally salads are thought of uh, as a, as a diet uh, food and it's uh oftentimes they're plain and tasteless and mm -hmm. uh, or if you want to you know because you people want to not have it have any fat, not have any salt, not have any all these things. So what happens, unfortunately, is 
yeah, in the, the way I grew up with, with iceberg lettuce and, uh, you know, and uh, it was just not satisfying. Yeah. It was a nice side, but yes. it was not going to be an entree. Exactly. So you're talking about seeing seeing salad quite differently. Yeah. And, and that you can add chicken or steak or whatever you sure. want on top of it and stuff like that. And down the line, if you want to change that to tofu or whatever, that's great. If you yeah. don't want to, that's fine also because you're way ahead because you're not eating out every 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 lunchtime. Yeah. not And so you think about all the things that you're avoiding by, right. by switching to this. So you're... You're right. not spending the ten or twelve dollars that you might At spend least. to, you know, to get takeout every day. You are not having the um, the calories and the carbohydrates from bread that you might have if you had a sandwich or That's you right. know if you ate out fast food. Mm-hmm. Um, you're again, you're skipping out on the calories and carbs of something deep fried. Um, and you're also, you know, positively getting a huge serving of vegetables and leafy greens, right. which is going to help you feel better. It right. helps your skin, helps you go to the bathroom better, we're, all of that kind of we're stuff. We're not calorie. We're not calorie. We're not making it hard. Yeah, we're not, no, we're not yeah, calorie mm-hmm. counting. We're not listing anything. We're right. not keeping logs. We're not doing any apps. Right. Uh, so this is, I think that that eliminates. So you can give yourself an A plus for yes. ten minute walk. You can give yourself yes. an A plus for four salads a week. I miss salad. Yeah, okay. exactly. And and once again, tying it back to our identity. I am a person that eats salads. Right. <laughs> you know, like that's it. That that's right. that ties into my self worth. I'm a person that fills my body with good foods. Right. And this and, is the way to do it. And we'll talk. We'll, eventually, we're going to talk about how to make a variety oh, of things, yes. and, and and we may even touch a little bit now uh, to this time. But it doesn't have to be traditional. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, lettuce based salad. It right. could be. It could be. It could be a uh, 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 Japanese or, 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 or Oriental uh, type of uh, uh, of uh, salad and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Asian salad. Oriental is an, an old term. <laughs> uh, Asian salad sure. and stuff like that. So yeah. So Can don't be just great yeah. Don't be fixed. Grains and legumes right. and all you, different kinds. Don't be fixated, right? Absolutely, right. don't don't be fixated on just what we're picking as an right. example. Good, exactly. And it and this could be you know what whatever is easy for you. If it's easier to just start with, I'm going to start by bringing my lunch four days a week from mm-hmm. from home. The chances of your at home food choices being healthier than your eating out right. at a restaurant right. choices is is you're already winning there. That's right. By so preparing food at home, give yourself an A plus for just kind of bringing food from home, uh, yeah. not eating out. So that's another. So you can give yourself several A pluses. Yeah. And uh, and on your way to even bigger and better changes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I I wanted to go through like a a little list here of if it's healthy eating that you're you know, wanting to focus on um, right. you know for the beginning of this year. I'm listing out some more obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying choices mm-hmm. that you can make, okay? Um, number one is both attractive and easy, and that is substitutions. Mm-hmm. So eat this, not that. So mm-hmm. a classic example of this is eat a piece of grilled chicken versus mm-hmm. a steak mm-hmm. or a sausage, right? Mm-hmm. Or eat... Um, a red sauce mm-hmm. with on your pasta, which doesn't, which is ma- is tomato based and doesn't have a lot of extra fats and mm-hmm. creams and stuff in it, versus a white sauce. Yep. So simple substitutions, and you, I mean you can carry that as far as you want That's to right. if it's and you know. Don't have to do them all, and you don't have to do the ones that you don't like. And yeah. If it, and uh, there's always tastier versions uh, of of whatever whatever there is, and you can juice up some of the sauces that come prepare, you know, pre made and stuff like that. Sure. So we'll talk more about that down the line. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, th- I think this is an especially good one because I think it's easy for for most people mm-hmm. to understand what the healthier of two choices sure. is, right? right? Like if you're comparing two similar things, it's pretty easy to mm-hmm. tell. Which one is going to be the healthier of the two choices? Yep. So you can you can get caught up in some stuff, but it's it's fairly obvious, right? That's right. So and you want both choices to still be compelling and satisfying, but mm-hmm. just choose the healthier one, right? Yep. Okay. So um, this next one is easy. So um, finding some sort of dietary guidance that is very simple. Mm-hmm. So one that we're suggesting is the DASH diet. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the FDA, I, I think, actually like publishes this one and talks about it mm-hmm. and stuff. This doesn't have anything to do with counting calories or macros or anything like mm-hmm. that. It's simply limiting your fatty consumption of meats and, and dairies. And salt. Uh-huh. And salt. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So low fat, low fat uh, 
uh, meats, dairies, mm-hmm. plenty of vegetables, plenty mm-hmm. of whole grains. And you can and you can use a Mediterranean diet to yep. kind of to, to kind of mimic a lot of the Dash diet and stuff like that. Exactly. Initially, when things are a little bit difficult because you you, you typically we have favorite foods or favorite yeah. uh, favorite dishes, um, and 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 for you to kind of figure out how to either change them around a little bit so that they're more healthful mm-hmm. or sometimes just trading them out for something else that's uh, also filling and i think filling is extremely i think people are afraid of being hungry yes absolutely. being tired and uh, you'll be impressed of if you change a high carb lunch a high sugar and high carb lunch for a little bit of good fats and protein, protein. how how much less likely you want to na- take a nap right afterwards absolutely. yeah so it's yeah. It, you some of that stuff you some of the uh, benefits are come pretty quickly. Right, yeah. Mm. Kind of uh, that positive reinforcement. Right. So let, we're going to talk, uh, um, let, let's keep going with that with, um, uh, you know, satisfying. So um, one of my favorite tricks is we, we use ground meats mm-hmm. in a lot of the foods that we make, right? Mm-hmm. Tacos and chili and s- sure. b- pasta sauce and stroganoff, all, all of that different kind of stuff. Um we have ground beef that's widely available at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Ground turkey is now also widely available mm-hmm. in the grocery store right next to ground beef. Mm-hmm. So simply switching out one ground meat for another can completely change mm-hmm. the you know the nutritional profile of that meal for you. We're going to talk much more about uh, about um, uh, uh, some of the spices and stuff because oh, yeah. that's uh, that's a, I think that's a big deal I think and yeah. we'll, it'll be a fun thing for us to talk about. For sure, yeah. So when we're talking about, you know, satisfying substitutions, you're looking for something that's going to give you closeness in texture, mm-hmm. um, closeness in flavor, right. obviously. Right. Um, and then just the overall like appeal of it with the dish. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how you know if you're making a good substitution. Yeah. All right. Um, here is a, an obvious one. So um, when you're at the grocery store shopping mm-hmm. around the periphery of the grocery store, mm-hmm. so the outsides of the grocery store are going to have the healthiest, freshest foods. Mm-hmm. So on the outside of the grocery store, you're going to find produce, and then mm-hmm. it's typically followed by the meat department, right. and then it's typically followed by low-fat dairy and cheese and eggs, mm-hmm. and then it's typically followed by the fresh bakery, which, you know, you can... To do your own damage there as well. But that's what you're going to find. Mm-hmm. In, you know, it, it, it's an easy rule to follow. Shop the perimeters of the grocery right. store, right? The, the less processed foods typically is what we're shooting for. Exactly. Um, I Another uh, another easy one is to pick one day per week to plan, shop for, and prepare your meals. Mm-hmm. Um, that isn't the easiest choice for everybody, but sometimes it is easier to only have one time per week that you're really devoting your brain power to thinking about what you're going to eat mm-hmm. because it, you get all the rest of those days back and all the rest of that time back mm-hmm. um, if you you know set it set it aside uh, one day per week. Um, and again, with that one, I'll share my like my meal prep method or whatever. So I call this one easy and obvious. Um, I prepare three meals per week. And I plan for each of those meals to give me two to three meals worth of leftovers, right? So that's Mm -hmm. like most of my meals for the entire week. Sure, Sure. I'll probably eat out once or twice in in the week, right? Right. Um, I pick two of those meals to make on a weekend day. Okay. So um, So I I should make them, not to eat. Exactly, not to to eat them. Or maybe maybe I'll be serving for dinner or whatever. But I'll make them on a weekend day. Okay, And I'll put them into all my pre-portioned containers and store them in the fridge so Mm -hmm. I can have you know, lunches and dinners and easy to grab and go. And then I'll pick one night a week that I'll make another meal and I'll make it the simplest, Mm -hmm. fastest and easiest meal that I cook the whole week will be on that weekend night. Gotcha. So the, you know, um, it it takes a little work sometimes to figure out what those easy and simple meals are Mm going to be for you. Mm -hmm. Um, But even just committing to making three meals a week at home Mm -hmm. um, can be a great best uh, fast start. Yep. And then, um, I'm going to end off here with another obvious and satisfying one. So back to our, you know, four salads per week or Mm -hmm. to, you know, bring your lunch from home on four days per week. You can put the $10 or $12, whatever per day that you would Mm -hmm. be spending on Mm -hmm. going out into a jar. Mm -hmm. If you want to use cash or into a savings account to save up for something special, you can still take that money that you would be spending somewhere else and then use it to get yourself something really satisfying. So. 
a significant amount of dollars and yeah. that that, uh, that you want to reward you. You're not going to save it for, for 30 years from now, but you can reward yourself. Exactly. A- Which, once again, mm-hmm. feeds that dopamine loop. It gives a positive reinforcement to keep building that behavior. So we're talking ha- positive habits and whatever ch- habits that are that are, are, are going to be satisfying that mm-hmm. we choose for ourselves. We've yeah. chosen to make a change. Therefore, we're, we're choosing to uh, get a system of, of, of changes or habits that we're going to uh, that we're we're going to you know, implement mm-hmm. and we're going to do it piecemeal small steps yep. that make sense that are that are easy that are uh, that are uh, obvious that are attractive and uh, and that are satisfying mm-hmm. so all these things um, and it doesn't have to be everything in your life it could be you start what we happen to pick food because of the beginning of the year mm-hmm. everybody wants to uh, change their 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 health their to a more healthful li- lifestyle mm-hmm. um, and so uh, we're going to and we're going to have a talk more specifics about foods yeah, and food preparation and and uh, just a plain old <clears throat> home the old fashioned home economics <laughs> how to package things yeah. how to store things what stores well and stuff like that yeah Absolutely. I'm looking forward to all this yeah I think I think it'll be really good too. Um, I, I wanted to sort of end with, um, the other, the other half of this, like, uh, you know, the four laws for building or breaking habits. So again, back to this book, Atomic Habits. Um, so we talked about how, you know, for building good habits, we got to make them obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying. If you want to break a bad habit or end an unhealthy behavior mm-hmm. habit, sure. um, you essentially do the exact opposite. So instead of making it obvious and easy and right in front of you, you make it invisible, right? Instead of making it attractive and appealing to do, you make it unattractive and unappealing Mm -hmm. to do. Instead of making it easy to go ahead and act out that behavior, you make it difficult. You put some distance there. Mm -hmm. And instead of making it satisfying, (laughs) um, you make it unsatisfying. Mm -hmm. So I think one, um, uh, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with with an e-cigarette, okay? Mm-hmm, this, sure. That's going to be my my example here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um say I'm, you know, I'm vaping every day and I I want to try and stop that. So, and to make the temptation and the habit before me invisible, I'm going to stop keeping it in my pocket and right. I'm going to keep it in a drawer in the kitchen instead. Yeah, a few more steps. A few make more steps. A little more friction. It's not, it's, if it's right there in my pocket, I feel it on me. I know it's there all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to put somewhere I can't see it. Um, I'm going to make it unattractive. So instead of um, allowing myself to do it, uh, you know, where in a place where I'm comfortable, like sitting on the couch or in my car or something like that. I'm going to say, if I'm going to vape, I have to be outside in the cold. Mm-hmm. You're right. So it's makes gonna, some, some more pain. Uh, more pain and, and more friction, mm-hmm. right? Um, well, if I want to engage in this habit, is it's not it's not going to feel as good as it normally does. But that, right. you know, that's what it takes. That's right. Um, make it hard. Um, so as as opposed to easy. Uh, one way to do this, you can buy your vape car- cartridges in two packs or four packs. Mm-hmm. Um, buy two packs of cartridges cartridges Mm -hmm. that if you because if you have to go to the store more frequently to you know get your refill or whatever that that again it makes it harder yes and then finally make it unsatisfying so i think um i i think a, a a good way to do this one is to um change the times that mm-hmm. you the times of days that you would get to engage in this yeah, behavior sure. so maybe your routine is to you know hit your vape pen on the way home from work mm-hmm. or um you know bef- last thing before you go to bed or first thing right. in the morning with a cup of coffee right. um make it change the times so that it happened you get it at unsatisfying times or Again, change or change the flavor the, yeah the, 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 that's very good yes yeah. exactly yeah Flavor that you're not a flavor you're, that you're not fond of, not used, like. as used to, right? Exactly. So we can, you know, you can sort of apply this model to, um, you know, any any sort of you know negative behavior or bad behavior that you want to change. And again, you know, it kind of it it feeds into the same stuff about you know the the cue to do it, the craving to do it, the response we get for mm-hmm. doing it, and then the reward for doing it as well. Yep. So. Um, I hope my my hope anyway in like framing this up all about habits is again to be you know empowering and to inspire people mm-hmm. to you know you have control of your life you have agency um, you can 
you know, you, you can have any kind of behaviors that you want in your life. You can. Mm-hmm. You're an adult. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can have any kind of behaviors that you want to have. That's right. Um, you don't have to eat your green beans. Yeah, if, you don't have you, to eat your green if beans. If you don't want to. Right, exactly. Um, and you don't have to engage in behaviors that you don't that make you feel bad about yourself as well, too. You have the power to change both things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that by, you know, tapping into our, our, you know, our natural tendencies to form habits, we can, you know, choose to add on some healthier choices to mm-hmm. that natural ability to make habits so that we the outcome overall over time, some more positive effects. And we're going to give you more specifics about foods and preparation yes, and stuff absolutely. and anything else that comes along the way. Right. Um, and um, it won't be specific to special diets or anything right. else, but but uh, part of it's uh, in small victories uh, expand mm-hmm. um, to, 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 to for you to breathe a sigh of relief that you, even if things don't go well, yeah. that you can withstand the the the, the, the um, negative, the negative, the quote unquote failures, the sure. lack of progress. And you can, uh, and that's where self-esteem comes in, mm-hmm. self-worth that you can, um, you can last through some of the difficulties um and you've chosen to uh, this path and it's not being forced upon you it's not it's not an addiction etc you've chosen this path and to make a conscious a conscientious uh choice a conscious choice and Mm -hmm. be conscientious about your choices right absolutely and uh you know just choosing choosing to do anything different has some inherent risks with it but it's a definitely a a a strengthening exercise, you know, for your character, for your mental health, for your self self worth. That's right. It's It's good to try and do things differently. We're going to, yeah, you develop some grit and Mm -hmm. uh, for the stuff that you want to change. And uh, if you don't want to change something, don't do it. Yep. Um, And uh, that's pretty easy. Yep. All right, good. All right, so we are going to have a great, very full season ahead of you. Um, Stay tuned for more. We're excited about the website. We're excited to do more with the podcast, some guests that we'll have this year. Um, again, please give us feedback. You can find us on Facebook or YouTube at Not Your Doc Podcast. You can send us an email at notyourdocpod at gmail.com. If you have any questions or want to give us a suggestion for topics or anything, um, it's just so good to be back with you guys. Thank you, Dr. Tadros. Yeah, Thank you, Seth. Be, thanks, Seth. And it's going to be a fun year. Yep. Stay healthy. This previous podcast represents my opinions and the opinions of my guests. This is not medical advice, and I'm not establishing a physician-patient relationship with any listener. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for informational purposes only, and because each patient is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions that you 